When I was a young teenager, I could not care less about politics. Name the last four Australian Prime Ministers, I had no idea. Talk about the current referendum. I didn't even know what the referendum was about. I was not the exception, but the norm. All of my friends, with the exception of one aspiring politician, didn't care about politics. Indeed, we really didn't care about most societally important issues. Instead, we were immersed in teenage culture, our peer group, chasing after girls, shopping, fashion, music, movies, books, and computer games, just to name a few. So why am I talking about my ignorance of politics in a talk about mass education? Well, it's because 15 years later, I care very much about politics. And when I say I care about politics, what I really mean is that I care about the world that we live in and the world that my two young children and all of your children will inherit. I get incredibly angry when, on a daily basis, we see politicians and anyone in a position of power deliberately abusing mathematics to deceive us. Whatever the important topic, climate change, refugees, any of the topics you'll hear about today, including what I'm talking about today, education, we're surrounded by deliberately dodgy mathematics, dodgy statistics, misleading analysis at a time when clarity could not be more important. My anger turns to frustration when a significant chunk of the population buys it and votes exactly as the politicians have manipulated them. Our society is burdened by widespread mathematical and scientific illiteracy, and it is costing us dearly. The situation is dire. Our schools in Australia have been falling in standards for science and mathematics for most of the last 10 years. By some standards, up to 40% of high school mathematics teachers in Australia are not suitably qualified to teach mathematics to our kids. Now, of course, we realise this is a huge problem and we're trying to do lots of things about it. Millions upon millions of dollars has been spent and will be spent at federal, state and local levels to try and develop mathematical initiatives to stem this decline in STEM. By some counts, there are more than 190 STEM initiatives running around this country right now. Some have achieved local success. A few have achieved national success. None have enacted ongoing, permanent cultural change in how we educate and excite our society about mathematics and science. Probably the most pervasive theme running through all of these initiatives is to try and make mathematics uh, relevant to real life. So what happens is maths questions become couched in everyday situations we might find ourselves in and apparently in desperate need of mathematics. Uh, one of my favourite examples is the ladder example, and some of you may have come across this in your studies. And the idea is you have a ladder and you need to know whether it can reach the window on the second floor of your house so you can clean it. Now what you're meant to do is get the ladder, measure the length of the ladder carefully, sit down, do some trigonometry and work out Oh, yes, it can reach that, that window. Now, I'm an academic, and I use mathematics every single day, and I still prefer the method of grabbing the ladder out of my shed, putting it against the side of my house, and seeing if it reaches. Call me old-fashioned, if you like. <laughs> so it's easy to poke fun at contrived examples, but what is to be done? Well, this brings me back to the picture, which I'm sure you're wondering about, on the screen behind me. This is a scene very similar to a scene from the movie Taken Two, starring Liam Neeson, and I know some of you have seen it. So the plot of Taken 2, and to be honest, it's the plot of all the Taken movies, <laughs> is that you take a random member of Liam Neeson's fictional family, you go to a random city around the world, that member is kidnapped, and then Liam Neeson has to kick ass for two hours to try and get that family member back. In Taken 2, it's Liam himself who's kidnapped. He's bundled into a car by a local gang, blindfolded and driven through the streets of Istanbul and dumped in a, a room with no windows. He has no idea where he is. But somehow, because he's an awesome spy, he manages to get his hands on a mobile phone and he calls his daughter, who's back at the hotel in the middle of the city. And he calls her and he says, grab that grenade out of the suitcase, because he's got a grenade with him in his suitcase, <laughs> and throw it out of your hotel window and onto the adjacent car park. There's no one in that car, by the way. And then he counts. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the 
This is a map of Istanbul showing where the hotel is and where the grenade went off. <laughs> now, Liam knows that sound travels at about 340 metres per second because he's a super smart spy. <laughs> and he knows that the sound took about four and a half seconds to get to him. So he knows that he's about 1,500 metres from the hotel. So he gets his daughter to draw a circle on a map centred on the hotel with a radius of 1,500 metres. Now, along the way, he's picked up some other information. He's a certain distance from another landmark. The movie's a bit murky on this. And he draws, gets his daughter to draw a second circle. And now he knows that he's being held at one of those two locations. And by remembering little bits of the car journey, he's able to deduce that it's probably the top right location where he's being held. Liam is there. Now, <laughs> it does not matter that the movie makes a horrible mess of the mathematics, probably gets some of it wrong, does not matter at all. The fact that the situation is, quite frankly, ridiculous and the movie got hammered by reviewers, that's completely irrelevant at all as well. What does matter is the fact that Taken 2 took in almost $400 million at the global box office. That's a lot of moviegoers. Now think about the dozens of other similar blockbusters which came out in that year alone. Now, I am not saying every viewer will walk into this movie and come out going, oh my goodness, I know sound travels at 340 metres per second and the next time I'm kidnapped in a foreign city, I should throw a grenade out my window and listen to how long it takes for the sound to get to me. I'm not saying that at all. But some people will step at that movie with an understanding or vague understanding for the first time that things like sound take time to travel over a distance and that the amount of time a sound takes to travel from point A to point B is related to the speed of the sound and the distance. Now, that's a fundamental mathematical and scientific concept absorbed along the pathway to brainless blockbuster entertainment. Every day, millions of teenagers the world around consume voraciously this blockbuster entertainment. The Hunger Games, Call of Duty, Twilight, Harry Potter, Insurgent, it's almost an addiction. I believe that this mass consumption of culture can be the saviour for our education system. Now, you don't have to tweak the story very much to get the mass into the story. And it's already the way, some of the way there, along with thousands of examples from recent movies and books, despite the best efforts of directors like Michael Bay. You can tweak the story just slightly or change a camera angle, and suddenly your movie is filled with mathematical concepts. It only has to be the lightest of touches. You don't need to corrupt the story at all or remove any of the entertainment value. Think of it almost as an educational certification for your movie just like the food you buy at a supermarket has a health tick of approval. Then, when your students come into class, teach to that material. Your students will have willingly done their homework. In fact, even if you hadn't asked them, they probably will have watched some of the most recent blockbusters or read some of the most recent best-selling books. Then, instead of teaching to a boring old mathematical textbook, you can teach to a set of emotionally engaging and riveting materials which already have full buy-in from your students. And one of the best bits is simply this. Many students struggle with the literacy and the comprehension to read a complex mathematics problem in a textbook. Almost everyone can sit down, watch and enjoy a brainless blockbuster movie. Now, there is this widespread apprehension that something which is entertaining can't possibly be educational. Now, I think that it can. And although this hesitation is widespread, there's an even more widely known saying by a great scientist, which I think applies particularly well in this situation. Thousands of the most passionate educators you could ever meet, and millions upon millions of dollars, have been devoted over the past years towards trying to solve this fundamental problem with maths and science. It's not from a lack of passion, expertise, resources, or effort that our standards are still falling. So what is to be done? Well, we can continue developing conventional mathematical initiatives which attempt a very, very large Band-Aid fix to the problem. Or we can try and enact true cultural change by embedding mathematics and science throughout mass entertainment, making it a near-invisible, integral part of our daily lives. 
If we do this, just maybe we will be able to become a society where mathematical and scientific literacy is universal. Just maybe, as a society, we'll be able to decide how to overcome the challenges facing humanity now and into the future, not based on mathematical misunderstanding, ignorance, or the manipulation of politicians, but instead based on true understanding, our core beliefs, and our core principles. That's my dream, and it's an honour to share it with you here today. I think we owe it to humanity to give it a go. Thank you very much.